listeners, beware. You're in for a scare. <laughs> it is I, your spooktacular host, Pucus, the bell be tolls for thee. Oh my goodness. Alternatively, the Melba Duke. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Joined by... I didn't tell Jacob to do this, so I got, I got one for you. You got Jacob. one. Yeah. Joined by Jacob... Uh, Jack off toilet. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. That's what the note says. No. Uh Jake O'Blantern Skelling John. Ooh. Ooh. Good job. Or Jack off toilet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, was, that was cool. I well, like that. Uh, I don't know if you've ever done the the spooky names. Because just... the time you're listening to this episode, it might be around Halloween. Well, yeah. And we're covering a very scary movie because Spooky. what's scarier than racism? Oh. <laughs> it's so scary. We've had three, three movies. Well, I mean, three had DCOMs. More. And we're not even counting The Color of Friendship <laughs> as one of them. <laughs> oh. Yes, we kind of had. We're, we're referring we had to tradition. Zombies 3, by the way. Okay. We had our tradition. Well, they've, they're listening to the podcast. Well, they've clicked on the thing. Well, are they? They haven't just had it Did shoved they? upon them. But we had, you know, our usual tradition is more that we have a Christmas movie yes. around Halloween time. Well, at least within October, we've had a Christmas movie. And a Halloween movie. Zombies is not really, but we'll be close with Under Wraps Under to wraps, next yeah. episode. But yeah, we're finishing off the Zombies trilogy, question mark? Could For now, more. trilogy. Yeah. But we could see, I guess. Better than Lord of the Rings? I don't know exactly where I could go from here if they made a fourth one. Bucky in space. I saw a Wikipedia footnote that it's like, sometimes it's referred to as Z3. And I'm like, no, oh. that's Xenon. Oh, yeah, what? Which arguably was a, Z3 is a worse Z3 than Zombies 3. Yeah, I thought Zombies 3 was well worth the $40 million budget. That's what's really scary. $40 million. I don't think there's probably been a movie even half of that. That's the most the movie's ever cost. (laughs) Yeah, it's quite a lot. They gave it all to Paul Hohen. Paul Hohen, young goat. Uh, I guess we don't really say, uh, we said our spooky names, but I am Lucas Melby. Chicken. Telejohn. And this is a whole new pod. I didn't come up with a spooky name. Podcast all about Disney Channel original movies. Yeah, a whole new. Pood. Pood. <laughs> I like that. And yes, we are covering all of the Disney Channel original movies. And with Zombies 3, we have entered 2022. That's pretty This wild. movie came out just a little over a year ago. That's kind of odd. We're almost to Take real moment. time. And oh, man. we actually recorded a little off schedule. So it's been about three weeks since we last watched a Disney Channel original yeah. movie. And was the break this is, necessary? This is, there's a lot in this Disney Channel. There is a lot. Movie. Um, he, I don't, I don't know how he mustered the budget, and you can definitely tell. I mean, I, I think it probably has, at least maybe the most modern, you know, special effects we've seen. Obviously, special effects have gotten a lot better the last 25 you know, years. You know, looking like a J.J. Abrams movie. There's lens flares all over the place. Lucas is talking about Dutch oven camera angles. Dutch angle. Dutch angles. Uh, all right, let's just get into it. The movie doesn't necessarily show off its budget right at the start because, like all the other zombies movies, we get one of those weird animated animated cartoon-y. movies. And I think finally, after watch or recording and listening to the podcast of the Zombies Two episode yes. we did, I finally came up with how to explain what it looks like. And it reminds like me comic of book. yeah, comic book, but like yeah. the Creep Show. I can't remember the exact company that those are a line that the Creep Show movies were inspired by, okay. but the Creep Show, at least the first one, I haven't seen Creep Show too. But there's like, actually, I actually think in Creep Show too, there's more cartoon stuff, but you can say that's basically zombies. Uh, so we get a catch up. We're getting narration from our main zombie, Zed. Z, uh, get it? Z for zombies. And. There's a lot of characters to remember, and I don't remember most of them. Yeah, the big they, ones, though, are Addison. A for Alien. Which we basically already knew at the end of the post credit scene. That's what they, they teased, yeah. Yep. Uh, then other importance, mm, Bucky, who unfortunately is not in most of no, this movie. He, he does get like a moment where he's kind of the front at the end there. But yeah, he, he was a lot, a lot more important, and he's um, her cousin. Which doesn't matter at all here. Yes. Because he's hardly in the movie. Uh, and then I guess really the only other thing to really Bonzo. remember. 
Uh, so yeah, now there's werewolves uh, there from Z- yeah. Z2. So I, I mean, Z2. Stop it, Lucas. So all of, I, I would say most of the characters from the first and second movie, you know, are in it. They're not important, you know, like you said, like, like those two. No, but. they even go out of their way. So Eliza, who is a girl zombie, fun fact, I guess, was pregnant when this was being shot. So all of her stuff. She's within a room that she's like All Zoom calling into yeah. uh, with like a robot where she is sitting down the whole time. So they even went out of their way to make sure she was still in the movie. She's pregnant. Even though she basically can't be in the movie. Whereas Descendants, you know, a lot of those movies is just like, oh, like Aurora's daughter, Audrey yeah. or whatever. Oh, she's just not in this one. They don't care. But Zombies is like, we're putting everybody back in this bitch. All of the dumb werewolves. We're going to even have like a, a love story between Eliza and a werewolf. I don't remember the name of. And no. I didn't remember that they had a love story. But or I, anything. I, I do recognize all of the the zombies they show and all the werewolves. I, I mean, like you recognize their faces. But yeah, the names aren't really too important. They don't serve too much importance in the movies. And then we have the entire new set of like four or five kind three. of aliens. There's only three of them. I mean, there's only three new characters. The mothership. Uh, but... <laughs> If you remember, Zed breaking glass barriers for zombies all over the place. His big motivation in this one is to do that again by being the first zombie to go to college, which yeah. I thought was going to be like breaking he, barriers because at the beginning of the movie, he's like, I need to win this football game to uh, presumably get like a football scholarship or something. Yeah. This football game never occurs because of aliens, as we'll get to. Yeah. And we're already Thinking into about trying out for a scholarship. We're already into our first song. Just going to ignore all <laughs> that was a John Bender Breakfast Club reference. OK, does he pop his pee as hard in the movie? No, <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't help it. Uh, it's not even really much of a song. I will say overall, I think this movie probably has the best songs of all of the zombies. Oh, yeah, movies. I, I there was maybe like one kind of techno song I thought was just kind of. Eh. Yeah, there are much more musical songs in this, than yes. especially zombies, too. That that was the heaviest. Like, this just feels like dance or music video of the movie no yeah I, I would say there's three or four songs in this one that i really enjoyed one of them was one that they've had lucas pointed out you know and the other two the previous two it was the same kind of song that we i think we both enjoyed in the in that in those movies as well that being said this first song they start out with not very good it's mostly kind of like a which was similar to some of the songs especially like in the first one it's like a cheerleader song where it's more oh, like yeah. marching band shouting out stuff it's called fired up you can assume what it's basically like. Yeah. Uh, it's starting at like the school, but then this pep rally for the football game is like the longest rally ever. And it like switches to yeah. night. Yeah, it goes in to zombie time. Town. And they're like, yeah, like they're like rallying. There's a uh, werewolf girl. It's like up on standing on top of a car. Like we're going to rip their faces off. We're going to crush them. You know, they're getting all just heated up in the principles bucky yipping. breaks through like a, a banner yeah and we're like yeah bucky, and, then, and that was the last time we, we don't saw see him. him for 40 minutes <laughs> uh but unfortunately aliens decide to wreck the rally including destroying the school bus yeah like, they make that, like that's we don't get to see the football game they though. make like three or four vehicles literally explode and going into this movie i was like how could this uh, for movies like this i don't really know like I think the budget for this was listed in like it was like a camera web page where they were saying like the, the cinematographer for this movie was saying, I use this camera. And they're like, and the budget was 40 million dollars. And oh. like, that's the source for this. So I kind of question it because this movie originally premiered on Disney Plus and then eventually moved to Disney Channel where they're like, hey, it's a decom. I mean, I, I would definitely say you could definitely tell. I, I don't know. I, I don't I can't think of another decom that's had. Yeah, what, what I was going to say is that, especially with streaming stuff, they never, you know, stuff costs astronomically more than you really think. And it's just like, is this some weird money laundering thing? But yeah. I, I ate my words were pretty quickly. I'm like, nah, this is looking pretty good. There's a lot of good effects. I still don't know if it's $40 million good, but it's a lot, a uh, big step up from the other zombies movies. I mean, I mean, when you think about movies like, I don't know. Oppenheimer that costs like, or is it, I don't know, was, that, was it Oppenheimer that costs like 200, 300 million dollars? Zombies. Avatar costs like 500 million dollars. Well, but there, there's a lot of other stuff in that because like, yes. you know, none of the actors in this movie are getting 
I don't think Big any of them salaries. are getting a million dollars. I don't think Milo Mannheim is no. engaged or you know calling for that much money himself. The, the space spacecraft might have though, you know, might, might have got a little money. RuPaul maybe, yeah. RuPaul, yes. We'll Spoiler alert. Uh, him and uh, her. They. I don't know. Mothership. They. Uh, but it's still a zombies movie, so even with the nice special effects, we get people saying "UF whoa." <laughs> to uh, bring in the aliens. And then we're into already our second song, which features all of the characters, even like Addison's parents get a couple of lines in it. It's very uh, straightforwardly called Alien Invasion. I really like this one. And it this was one, pretty fun. It went on for probably 10 minutes. Wasn't like a long. Well, there was like we a check kind of in a cut with, in between. And stuff. Yeah, well, it's yeah. This is more in a musical fashion where sometimes we break for dialogue and then we'll bring back in. And Jacob's like, I like this song, too. I'm like, it's, yeah. it's the same song. Uh, so they, they introduce all the aliens at this point. Like they literally like. Well, just a little. I want to call out one line before we get there of the ACs, who again are the lackeys of Bucky. But they have the very awkward line of being like, "Not zombies, werewolves, or human, human beings." beings? They try to make causing. This? They try to make it all rhyme, and it's like you it. can't, you can't uh, do that in a rhythmic fashion. No. Addison's parents were also kind of like, uh, uh-uh, da 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 da. Uh, and yeah, blue aliens, blue haired blue aliens haired, with like say. masks. They have masks at this like point. welding masks on. Yeah, they beam down and start busting a groove. Like, I mean, they've they've literally like destroyed the city, though, or I guess it's zombie town. Yeah. And then it kind of switches to funny musical mode because then like the werewolves use their moon powers to try to fight them. And they're like dance fighting. them. We're like, we're not here to hurt stuff. you. We're friends, Lee. And then they're like marching down the streets in a you know, I, kind like of West Side Jabberwocky. Story. Yeah, I don't know. They got some pretty you good moves. You and Jabberwocky. <laughs> I don't know. They've ever done some Jabberwocky moves. Um, there's a scene where they're going down a alley way. That's, that's way Is down. It? I yeah. mean, isn't that when the werewolves are chasing them? Wasn't there like some, when was the Michael Myers-esque music? Wasn't that's, that yeah, that's okay, like that's 30 later. minutes okay. from that. Okay. There's some intercut dialogue where the aliens are just speaking to each other, where we basically learn that they're a hive mind or at least have telepathy. Jinx, they, you owe me a, so, hey, I said, you said Jinx. Yeah. They're not able to show emotion and they're looking for, or they recover a scout they, ship. They can show emotion, but they have it turned off. Kind of like how zombies have the things that they wear that they controls their anger and how werewolves have the moonstone necklaces that keep them in line. They have their own thing that can, yeah, yeah. Like, kind of like block. But currently... Yes. It's turned off, so they don't have emotion. Yeah, correct. Don't worry, Jacob. I watch Zombies 3. I just want to explain it so the people... I'm, I'm just... Well, you're I, the... You keep I'm comparing. Jumping ahead. You were I'm just like... comparing and contrasting. At one point, they're running on an alley. It's like, bitch, that's 40 minutes from now. Sorry. You're, you're sorry. acting like you're living sorry, in a sorry. Christopher Nolan movie sorry, where timelines are all intermixed. Sorry. Uh, that's a reference to... Uh, why? Well, I guess... I, it's I, a reference to Christopher I just Nolan. I thought of, like, Dunkirk. All of his movies, like yeah. uh, nothing, he can't tell a straightforward, you know, story for any of his movies except Batman, really. Yeah, Batman. Not Batman Begins, though. Uh, they recover some scout ship that was like underneath the street, so they blew up the street. Yeah, and, and within it there is a uh, video, which is like glitched out, but it's like somebody with a mask with white hair. Mind yeah, you. was it? Yeah, it must have been white hair. I guess she I didn't really. Hair. Think of the significance of that at the time. As soon as I saw it, I, I was I was kind of thinking. Well, I kind of knew some stuff going into this movie. Already. So she had the white hair and the mask, and she kind of explains, "Oh, you got to go go to Utopia, and you need to find all of these the riddles and these things. things. Find the most precious, the most precious thing, the most." And it's like sort of glitching out, and then it. I will get ahead of ourselves here because I don't spell out a lot of details in this movie. Kind of had a bad headache today, but Zombies Three kind of washed it away, but. Classic kind of similar to the werewolves. They're trying to find something secret in the town. And here's it's a riddle where they need to find a map because of actually their planet is destroyed. So they needed to come here to find the scout ship to guide them to their new home planet. Okay. Utopia. They're going to hide the fact that they're doing this because understandably Seabrook is already about to kill them because they have racism baked into their DNA. It's true. They're like, other kill them. Uh, so they're going to cover that they're there by picking up a flyer and saying, hmm, take us to your leader, your cheerleader, because yes. they're going to enter in the national cheer competition. Hell yeah. Which in a way is like, is Seabrook just an entire nation? Because when we get to the cheer competition, there seems to be three teams there and one of them are the aliens. And the other are the eels. 
And yeah, they're pretty good. At least at this point, the Seabrook people, I guess they kind of did this with the werewolves where they're like, okay, sure, aliens, you're cool. And that means they get to actually, no, they do kind of interrogate them. But then they're yeah, like, they, all right, they, now you're in our school. <laughs> yeah, they take them to the, the police precinct. The Z Patrol, which Z we learned. I don't think it's ever name dropped in the second movie, but here they say Z Patrol, which still implies that they have Zombie Patrol. a police force mainly focused on dealing with zombies yeah. who are supposed to be just normal citizens. But yeah, at, at the police precinct, they've, I don't know, they, they kind of start to highlight how smart the zombies are and what they're capable of doing. One the, of the aliens. Oh, the aliens. Zombies, sorry, yes, dumb yes. shit stuff. Yeah. But yeah, yeah bong, ching, tong, bing, That's bong, why they can't boy, get into oh. college. Uh, so, yeah, like, like they show one guy was able to crack a, his handcuffs off. Like this is kind of the main but That was more alien. that they have the spark of stardust oh, that they can just stardust, yes. do magic with, basically. Yeah, they're smart. They're powerful. One alien who I believe is Aspen, who is actually, I think, a gender non-binary actor oh. and has they, them pronouns, I think, in this movie, but also could just be like, they're aliens. You Was know? that the Asian one? Yes. Okay. Uh, so they hack into Zed's college, I guess, or like research yes. to be like, oh, you aren't exceptional. That's why you can't get into college. And he's like, uh, have you met me? Let's correct your grade. Have you watched Zombies 1 and 2 yet? Yeah. So he's, he's like, I'll become exceptional. exceptional to get into college. Yeah. That's his main thing. We get a really great scene where they remove their emotional limiters. Yeah. They get to feel I, like that. They like immediately start like, ha ha, I'm so giddy with excitement. And, and then they really ask, really what happens. is cheer? What yeah. is competition? What is love? Actually, that literally comes yes. later. It does happen. Unfortunately, we don't get the what is kiss that we always what wish is for. Kiss. Uh, then we kind of call back to Descendants 2. As we mentioned, RuPaul voices the mothership in this movie. Like Whoopi Goldberg. But only voices. Says more than Whoopi does in Descendants yeah. 2. It's not just once. I would say it's 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 probably like a you know a six main character in the movie. Uh meh. Sure. You know what? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Audio quality, though, of RuPaul sounds a little sketchy. I don't know if it was just uh, like recorded at like home on his echo, phone or something. I would say it kind of had an echoey. In his bathroom or whatever. Yeah. Then uh, a good song, but one of the weirdest premises, especially coming off of like Zombies 2, is Ain't No Doubt About It, which is a Zed and Addison song that has a brief interlude where the aliens are part of the song. But it's basically about them saying like, we're totally good. We're in a it's relationship. Fine. Nothing's going to keep us apart. Everything's it's okay. Fine. It's fine. And we always talk about, especially with these sequel movies, where it's like, well, we kind of already had the, the conflict that ended with a relationship in the first movie. So what do we do in the second? You know, what is High School Musical 2? Oh, uh, Gabby and Troy break up for a little it's bit. Always a relationship. But what can so, you do? You can't do that in a third movie, right? So then for them to just be like, no, we're totally good. It's like, this is. Kind of weird foreshadowing that doesn't actually pay off, but it's just, I think you're protesting a little too much. Yeah, they're just worried about going to different colleges, I think, at this point. Yeah, which, as far as, we only know one college. Because they don't name drop any other. Zed hasn't been accepted yet because he's, he needs to he's a zombie. win the football game. Yeah, because he's a, a zombie. Yes, yes. But I think there's even parts in the song where they're just like, we're fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I don't know. It felt. A little derivative in how it sounded, maybe even kind of like chilling like a villain a bit. Uh, oh, that's a great song, too. Uh, but it's still good. Chilling. Oh, I already man. mentioned that the aliens have already joined the school because, of course, that's what happens in these movies. Is just new kids show up at school all the time. And by joining the school, they have beaten all sorts of Zed's grades and records so that he is no longer ranked highly in the school. So, so he's not exceptional enough to get into college. Yes, because they look up his grade, and he is second in the class. And then immediately, he's upgraded to 9th, 18th, and he keeps dropping because, yeah, all the zombies there, after they figured out how to sharpen a pencil, which they show them... The aliens. Know, the aliens, yeah. I just, I just keep pooping uh, that up. Monsters, they're just all the same to Jake. <laughs> so the aliens... They figure out how to sharpen a pencil, which they show kind of funny. They're like, you know, ah, it's fine, whatever. And great description. They're also great <laughs> at athletics. They beat, like you said, all the records. Um, and he's he's basically, he's like, oh, I'll do it better. And they're like, well, we'll do a better too. And like, and, but then they like hack into his school records because he tells them about the Moonstone. 
and they're like, oh, your, well, your teacher was racist against zombies. Yes. You actually should have gotten a B minus. So I'm like, wait, did they just switch it for you yes. to have a B minus? They did. They showed it. But they, it's still like B minus isn't exceptional. I guess maybe for a zombie? I mean, they said this is the, the grade you deserve. So yeah, you went from a C plus to a B minus. So Zed's going to help them get to the, the Moonstone. And this causes Aspen, the alien, to have feelings that she doesn't understand. So this is where she asks Addison, what is love? Yes. And Addison explains it. And she says, oh, I love Zed. And Addison's like, um, a girlfriend. Everybody freaks out. And Addison's like, but Bongo's I'm in love with Zed. like, you better not be loving on my Bongo boy. My and Bongo. Aspen's like, well, that's very normal. What if she's trying to do like polyamory stuff yeah. here, you know, join our polycule up in the oh spaceship. Gosh. And then there's some weird line where Addison's like, I'll love Zed forever. Yeah. So long as he gets into the same college <laughs> as me. <laughs> and it's he's like, gotta well, be a smart boy. Otherwise he's gonzo like Bonzo. Yeah. And then, uh, the aliens just have kind of like an introductory cheer show off where they do a routine to some techno music and they have magic space powers that allow them to just flip in air yeah, forever. Doing, yeah. Constant flips or their levitate. uniforms very Look reminiscent of the original Tron, I felt. Yes. They do a, a human pyramid, but it's like reverse. So like it's, it's an four. alien pyramid. Oh, the the aliens built the pyramids, bro. So it's like four on top, three, two, and then like that was kind of fun, you know. And the uh Seabrook. Don't really even see any wires. I don't think we ever see really well, wires. It's 2022. I mean huh? 40 million dollars they can paint out some wires. Huh? It's good. It looked good. And the cheer Seabrook cheerleaders feel very threatened. So they're like, we must do the forbidden move. In the our triple routine. Lindy. Or I felt like they called. said like war. And then yeah. Jacob's like, oh, I think a triple Lindy is a real thing. And I was like, oh, well, now I'm less in impressed. that It's not like the forbidden chair move. Like somebody has died trying. This. So like I said, there's a movie where Rodney Dangerfield, I think it is, jumps on some like diving board and he goes back and forth and back and it's, it's not not related to this kind of triple indie or whatever the heck the name was but i don't know I, I i've heard that name before so it's 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 a thing then we get a werewolves led song called come on out because the werewolves almost happen upon the aliens and now the moonstone at, at one point in the movie it seemed like it was hidden but then it, the it's like just the force field open. like was removed from it but then there was another force field but the aliens are able to bypass that. Yeah, but then the werewolves to. almost catch them, so they run away. Yes, they know their force field's been broken down on the moonstone. So they think the moonstone... So Zed says the moonstone is the, the most, most precious, precious thing to the werewolves. So they, that's what they think. Okay, the most precious thing is the moonstone. So they try to steal it, and they get caught. Or and this song... Caught. I wasn't a big fan of most of the stuff with the werewolves in the first movie, and this song has some of the, the dumbest-looking dance choreography that if i had been drinking something at the moment 100 percent a spit take would have occurred where they just seem to oh be my. like hunching and unshrugging they're, they're just, just like shrugging their shoulders the whole movie he loved loved the moves they were doing they were just kind of look trying to look there spooky. was more that they did but that's like literally the start of it was willa the werewolf is just like shrugging her shoulders this is where down. we get the michael myers music yeah and very they're, john they're, carpenter-esque there was even because they're chasing them down an alley and it made me yes. think of another john carpenter oh. movie christine where a oh. car, you know, runs oh, a yes. guy down an alley. Yeah. Can't remember, but I'm assuming John Carpenter did the music for that movie, too. Christine, I think pretty underrated. I think that's a pretty good movie. I've heard of that. That is just about the car that just comes alive. Evil, evil car, the whole thing is? Yeah. Whole okay. I and it, watch it. Well, and a, a nerdy kid gets the car, and then he turns into a cool, like, greaser, because oh. he's like, I got a sick car. Hey, girls, you want to have sex with me? Oh, no, you don't? My car's going to kill my bullies, though. Oh, my God. It's it's silly, but it's fun. You could say that same thing about Zombies 3. Uh, the aliens end up getting beamed up at the last second. Uh, but who else got beamed up into the spaceship? Why? Addison. Hey, Addison. I wonder why. Wait here. Like, a for alien. I watch zombies too. I know she's going to be an alien. She's walking down this, the halls of the ship, which seems to be mostly a physical set, I think. So it looks looks very much like the... And th this is the Dutch angles right now where we're seeing... Yeah, there's kind of a it's weird kind of, effect where I don't even know... It could be possible that they didn't even move the camera itself. It could be like a digital tilt put in afterwards because it's like... I assume the style of Paul Hohen, you know, I can't 
fully enter the nope. mind of the master nope. uh, that he was probably like, oh, we're in space now, even though they're still on Earth. It's just in yeah. orbit. So the camera's kind of tilting and then tilting back and forth as if it's floating. Yes. Anyways, the ship set looks pretty good. It's very reminiscent of 2001 uh, a Space Odyssey. I wouldn't go that far. I was going to just say, like, the first ship in the very first Star Wars movie, the, like, the Space Rebel Balls. blockade runner. Okay. Uh, Zed's on the ship because he was helping them, like, fix the computer. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, why are you here? So, like, here we think that he somehow maybe got beamed up to. Yeah, I'm like, you're going to try to tell me that he's an alien, too? <laughs> he quickly explains, oh, no, they wanted me to teach them about Seabrook. Blah, he's like, blah, I'm blah. giving them the Moonstone. I'm a bad guy. And they're like, well, how did you get up here? You know, so they have to kind of explain that. And this is where they say, oh, our planet was destroyed and we're trying to get this map. And then Zed hits the mother ship computer to fix it. And then they're able to replay the video from Grandma, what we, who we find out is Grandma. Mm -hmm. So like, it goes, my precious thing. Then the mask comes off and she's like, oh, it's my grandma, white hair. And she's like, my most precious thing, my granddaughter. Uh -huh. And it's like, she explains that she had a you know a child with a man and there's this a whole thing where it's man. like it, it's obviously very funny that it's like she had a daughter but she was not my most precious no, thing the grand she got the granddaughter and then it's like oh then i decided like i gotta deal with this map thing but the map is part of the dna so it yes. would have been to the mom too probably oh that's a good point uh but then also if you think about the math of genetics which you know isn't everything. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. The way but she would only be like a quarter alien because her mom would be half alien. Yeah. And then true. her mom was with a, just a normal guy. The way they reveal it at the end of the movie is like they do like a hand, like a scan of her. Oh, hand, yeah. I'm getting I'm pulling they, a Jacob. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. That's how they at this point. They it. still think the map is within a cheerleader yes. trophy because obviously it's zombie three. It's got to be in the cheerleader. And trophy. they the movie itself kind of tries to lead us that way because we do see her Addison looking through and there's a picture where her grandmother is holding the trophy. Yeah. So, I'm getting mixed up because in classic Lucas fashion. I saw most of like the plot twists reading on like IMDb before watching this movie. Fair enough. So, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't go into Zombies 3 PR. Uh, so at this point, yes, we believe the it's in the trophy still. So that's why they need to win the, the dance competition. But Addison, for the most part, is just overjoyed because she's like, my I, whole I life, I, I thought am. I was special and not just a white girl. And now <laughs> I know that I am a minority, too. <laughs> I thought I was a werewolf in the last movie, but Yikes. actually I'm an alien. Yikes. A quarter alien. She's like the Elizabeth <gasps> Warren of aliens. Oh my goodness. But Addison is still alone because the aliens realize she doesn't have the spark of stardust necessary to speak with them telepathically as well as activate their alien technology. And her hair also isn't blue. Yeah, that was a... Uh, weird kind of retcon in a way because it's like well at the end of the second movie they basically say well she's an alien yeah but then in this all the aliens show up with blue hair which is probably just so like you don't immediately think she's an alien but then why is her hair not blue oh it's because if she's away from the aliens long enough it stops being blue sure why not makes sense checks out it works oh it definitely makes sense makes sense Addison asks her mom, like, hey, where where did grandma grow up? And she, oh, Seabrook, she was always here. Which isn't a lie. Well, she didn't grow up in Seabrook. Well, the, the mother, I guess, says that she was always, had been, her herself, the mother had always been on the, on Earth. Maybe I didn't listen closely enough in that scene. Anyways, Exceptional Zed, we get yes. to. Your favorite song? Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm Exceptional Zed. So Zed is about to have his interview for college. There's yes. the whole little thing where they're able to reconvince the scouts to come look at him, even though the aliens invaded and the football game didn't happen. And Addison is starting to get alien powers. Yeah, the whole thing is like, you don't she have the spark, but now she does. Things. Yeah, she shocks Zed and it turns him into the zombie. But we still get the song before that, which yes, is just yes. the entire community of Seabrook hyping up Zed for the interviewer to be like, like everybody. he's exceptional. But then Zed's like, mm, I don't know if I am. And then he's like, we all are exceptional, Zed. But I'm I'm Zed, so I'm the most exceptional. And then, yeah, the, the interview gets all fucked up because 
it wouldn't be a zombies movie if he didn't go full zombie mode at one point. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like, I don't think in the first movie, like, the transition for him becoming a zombie is as smooth or as scary. I feel like... Whoa, that. well, rewind, everybody. Go listen to that episode because you'll hear Jacob, I'm pretty sure, say, I think it was a good effect. Yeah. I thought it looked pretty cool. I would say it's better now. Though. They've mastered the zombie. I mean, I, I don't... Would you uh, agree with that statement? Compared to a lot of the other effects in this movie, it still looks kind of hokey. Sorry. I'm a hater. I'm a hater. Too used to his Oppenheimer films. <laughs> Oppenheimer doesn't even have that much special effects in it. Uh, it has a bomb. It, it, what? It has a bomb, Lucas. But it, he saves the, the interview because the interviewer runs out because she's scared because he's a zombie. And then he kind of guilt trips her into thinking, OK, I'm a minority. I need to do this for my people. Well, he does it because he starts singing the song again at the end. She's like, why should I make an exception for you? He's like, because I'm exceptional, Zed. No, actually, we all are. It's because of my community. Uh-huh. And then he ends the song by saying, we're exceptional. We're exceptional, Zed. He doesn't say Zed at the end. It'd be, it'd be funny if he did, but he doesn't. They got like an effigy of him, like a big like movie <laughs> puppet do. of Zed. I, I like that. I pointed that out to Luke. I wanted to make sure he's seen it. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. It's I don't know. Is that like medieval kind of times kind of thing? Sure. Renaissance festival stuff. Yeah. Renaissance festival is very historically accurate. <laughs> yeah. In the sense that it's about the Renaissance, but likes to focus on jousting. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so then it is time for the cheerleader competition. This is where we were first teased earlier. Uh, they were going into like a, a trash fire pizza restaurant because zombies cook their pizzas on trash, I believe. And there's and another there's a mascot. The shrimp mascot ran into we a think purple the, mascot. We think the eel. Yeah. And Jacob's like, oh, that's from the other school. I'm like, I don't think they've ever <laughs> said there's another school. <laughs> there almost doesn't seem to be a world outside of Seabrook because it's they talk true. about zombies. But the way they set up as well as werewolves, it seems that it's only in Seabrook. But this is the East Side Eels, who are the first team to go up. Uh, and basically only one of two teams because the aliens are going to go up. But before this happens, hey, Bucky's back in the movie. Throughout the movie, the aliens have had kind of men in black, uh, race people memory devices. And Bucky finds one and he's like, oh, what's this? And he erases oh, his memory. This? Oh, what's this? And he just oh, keeps erasing this? his memory over oh, and over this? again. Yeah, he gets in the loop. And they, they, we never even see him get taken out of the loop. No, we the werewolves see him and then they get Eliza to remote hack into it. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're like, the, the aliens have been lying this whole time. They're here to take over our community. So they call the fucking Z Patrol. Yeah. So then Zed gets a call saying he's been accepted to college. While he's taking the call, he sees the Z Patrol coming up and says, oh, I better tell the aliens. So he warns the aliens, don't perform. They're going to arrest you. We but they don't leave. Go. They're just they just don't go on stage. Yeah, they guess they don't. Yeah. <laughs> you can't taint our great sport of cheerleading. That would be the true crime. Addison and the crew, though, they perform and they don't really dance too much or cheer too much. They just kind of sing like you were saying. So it's a lead in where Addison has a song. I'm finally me. She's finally a minority. Oh my She's God. singing in the dressing room and then it's leading out with the uh, rest of the team. And she's still singing out on stage. And then it kind of just finishes with the cheerleading routine. And she at one point does the triple Lindy or whatever. Whatever it's called. Aided by her underlying alien powers. But unlike the aliens earlier where they're kind of like slow-mo in the air, this is like she has extended airtime. Yes. But she moves really quickly. And then judges are like, shit, that was the triple Lindy. And I'm like, oh, really? They kind of look bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, so I, I think. I mean, obviously it defied physics. Triple, but... a triple rotation of her body. I don't know. But yeah, it was just like kind of goofy. I don't know. I was disappointed. I wanted it to be more death defying yeah. or something. Uh, so she wins and she gets the trophy, but the party's busted by the werewolves coming out to say they're liars. There's a whole thing. The cops are coming in. But then Addison reveals to everybody that she's an alien and she's now. This happens after the aliens try to beam up to the mothership. But the, but the werewolves shock it and they use their powers and they basically kill the mothership. And like, I'm like. What the hell is the werewolves in these movies? They got moon powers. They're very <laughs> powerful. So the does mother- negate any technology. It's like the mothership's basically like broken at this point. So the aliens can't really escape or do anything. So it's like yeah. useless. It's an important detail. Somewhere in here, she reveals Addison, that is, reveals she's an alien and then gets like a 
she goes super saiyan blue she gets the blue hair she's yes. got blue clothes yeah I, where did the blue clothes come from just magically appeared on her body uh, and the mom comes out and she's like yeah i'm part alien i just hit it uh later on we'll get a reveal White that she hair. was wearing a wig the entire time oh too my gosh Addison was the most precious thing, not her mom. And the dad doesn't care that they're both minorities. But you still can't go to space, young lady. <laughs> they scan her for the map. Oh, cool. And Zed's like, it's oh, on her hand it's, it's cool that you're a blood. monster now, too. But then it's like, we have to take her to space because the map is dynamic. It's ever changing and we can't just all download it. So she's got to come with us. Oh, no. I thought we were only going to be a little ways away if we didn't go to the same now college. We're many galaxies away. Drama of the highest degree in a zombies movie ever. Werewolves have damaged the ship, as Jacob has said. Yeah, uh, but they. Blue Paul is very upset. The side werewolf Wyatt explains to Willa, the lead werewolf, being like, "You basically are mad at the aliens for doing everything we just did in the last movie, which was lying to people." In order to save our special tribe or whatever. Yes. And they're like, okay, I guess we'll use the Moonstone to help them repair A the ship. A bit of hypocrites, one might say. So then there's all this weird tech stuff that basically winds down to like, oh, we got to organically connect the Moonstone to our ship. Oh, you're half alien, Addison. And half cheerleader. That's literally said. Half alien, half cheerleader. So wow. she can act as a conduit. But then she's not enough. So then they use Zed because he can't die or something. Uh, so then Zed gets dead. super zapped and then the, the ship gets powered up. And then it's very emotional. They got to run to the, the teleporters to get off the ship before it takes off. And Zed or Addison says to Zed, maybe we'll meet again, Zed, somehow. And Zed says, someday. And then we get the callback song from the first movie and return to the second we movie. Like it. But this time... All the characters get to sing parts of the song because at this point now, Willa, the werewolf, now Aspen, the There's alien, about 40 has fallen characters, for Willa. You know, we know all this. We point. get to see Addison flying out into space singing it too. And you know what? Jacob's like, oh, this is a good song. I'm like, yeah, Jacob, it's you been all the movie. Two other times. So Bonzo can drive now. Bonzo's driving, I think, at this point. Uh, yeah, because we didn't establish that Bonzo needed to pass his driver's test. <laughs> And you know what? Thankfully, they didn't show him failing or passing or Not, or even taking the test. And we only get two or three moments in this movie where he does his little battling. We, I, I still they, don't know they, why he battles. Do we know they why? got my notes through time travel to be like, I hate Bonzo. Or uh -huh. They never went as hard on Bonzo as in the first movie. So then we see Addison finishes out the song and it's kind of fading out from her through the spaceship window to see the spaceship flying away. Looks pretty good. Jacob's yeah. like, do you think there'll be a Zombies 4? I'm like, well, I don't think this is the end of the movie because that would be a fuck. <laughs> it it, it kind of seemed like the end. Yeah, the it's way a they fake were, out. The way they were doing I it. I saw uh, on Wikipedia, Milo Mannheim, who plays Zed, was like, I don't know if there'll be a Zombies 4. We feel like we wrap it up pretty good in this movie. And I was thinking, like, not if she just flies off in the <laughs> spaceship. That'd be the craziest <laughs> ending to one of these movies. But nope, uh, not to spoil anything. But first, we cut back to Seabrook, where everybody's preparing for graduation. Uh, None including of them have Bucky. hats on. They, they can't put hats on their no. cool hair. No, but Bucky's got his fedora. <laughs> yes. And, okay, spoilers. The real new planet, the utopia for the aliens. It was Seabrook the whole time. True. They were flying out in space, I guess, with the map that was just looping back to where they came from before. Pretty dumb, uh, but it's a happy ending because let's add one more weird uh, monster group to the town. In fact, we'll get a quick cartoon montage of showing the aliens coming there. But also vampires and mermaids are yeah, welcome vampires to see and mermaids. And I, I, I could have seen vampires being the movie four. Well, in this point, it's like, well, I guess they can't do zombies for because I mean, would they have to do both in there? I feel like vampires, people give like the Twilight movies crap because it's like, oh. oh, the vampires, they can go out during their day. They're sparkly. I'm like, you want to see some weird vampires probably look at zombies five or four or whatever. If werewolves basically have nothing to do with werewolves except that they turn feral at times. Uh, but mostly it's about moonstone powers. I'm exceptional, Zed. Whatever. We get a, a nice little final song during graduation. 
It's nothing but love. Addison is there. The aliens are there. Bucky's there. This is kind of Bucky's biggest moment. Actually, yeah, no, that's still to come. Oh, but then it kind of ends. So as they're singing out this song, classic decom group number, the credits are rolling and then yeah. it kind of just stops. And they're like awkwardly kind of like, ha ha, you know, almost like a bloopers rap, moment or like rap, behind the scenes. Rap. Yeah, exactly. He wrapped it up. Uh, but then we cut to Bucky inside of the spaceship. Yeah. Saying he must bring the greatness of Bucky throughout the galaxy. So he's basically stole the spaceship. And then the music cuts back in then, and then that's like the end of the movie. Yeah, you see him kind of taken off. Uh, Interesting. That does feel like one of those things, kind of like the end of Teen Beach Movie 1, where they eventually get to what that really was going to be in the sequel, but it's not like a direct connection. I don't feel like if Zombies 4 happens, that anything about Bucky jumping around space is really going to be there, unless it's like, I'm back and I was out in space and now I'm back here. They could have made a miniseries. Bucky travels the galaxies. Yeah, you could say he's born to be a star. Wow. I've never seen that movie. All right, Zombies 3. That's a movie I did see. And you know what? I might go so far to say it's the best Zombies movie. Not a high bar. It's basically between this and the first movie. Both are dumb. Both are fun in their dumbness. But I think this one, because in a way... The first movie's ridiculous with its like racism parallels, but that's what makes it kind of fun. Where this is just like fucking nonsense, Wild. nonstop, balls to the wall. I I would say the movie moved pretty fast. I mean, so did the second one, but I just didn't like the music and the werewolves suck. And this movie doesn't have a ton of werewolves. In no, it. and you, you did like their hunch hunchback kind of pose. I mean, though. not in the you sense that. that I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was ridiculous. Um. Yeah. No. I. I uh... I would have to agree with you there. I I, I, I I don't know, like I said, the whole $40 million aspect of it, I can definitely tell, you know, they had good effects, had good songs. Definitely. It's still weird, though. To go from, because it's it's a, an amorphous thing, because obviously the ratings for zomb- any of the Zombies movies on television aren't going to match any other. And, and maybe the only reason would be, maybe like you said, you thought it was going to be like a much bigger release. Like, like it's tough for us to understand like how big the zombies movies are because they started to only show on, um, like you know they're probably mainly Disney Plus movies, so their numbers that we see on cable are like very low. That's so, what I was literally just saying. Yeah, so it's a it's tough to kind of grasp. How if anything, it's probably more have. like look at how many views the music yeah. videos have on YouTube, and oh, maybe that's what okay. Disney cares more about yeah. engaging the youth audience to yeah. get sell albums or get streams on Spotify. I don't know. Uh, I would say as the direction seems to be going of, I just got my email recently basically saying like, oh, your annual subscription to Disney Plus, it's going to be about 80 more dollars. It's like I was paying 80 or $90 a year. Now it's going up to like 140 or $150. And you, you don't get any more value out of it either. No, in fact, they're removing stuff from the service. So you know what I did? I switched to a monthly ad-supported plan so that when we run out of decoms, I don't need to Goodbye. pay for a full year. Sorry, Sam, you won't be able to watch The Simpsons anymore. Where well, that's the thing is a lot of these companies are trying to push people into the ad-supported ad support plan stuff. because they're realizing even having people paying you a monthly fee from now until the end of time I guess isn't as much as we thought it was going to be. So we probably make more money off of ads then. So we want people to watch the ads too. Yeah. So wonderful world. Hey, you put the Jenny project on there. Maybe uh-huh. I'll pay you $150 <laughs> a year. So I guess I won't expect a bad Disney Cinderella loot box this year. Oh, God. Yeah. Maybe if they have that. a zombies loot box, maybe I'd get in. We on were that. so pumped for that. We were so <laughs> let down. Do you even have uh, do you even have any of the stuff still? Uh, I. Kept the pin because I know Disney adults are kind of crazy for pins. So I thought at some point I could try to sell that. And I think I kept the apron somewhere. The artwork. Well, it was not real. It wasn't like the artwork was a bunch of bullshit. Uh, my mom, I gave the stuff to her because she gave it to her friend who gave it to her granddaughter who cared more about Cinderella with, than me, which is basically negative. Like Cinderella, I don't care about at all in disney movies i care probably more about sword and the stone than cinderella fair enough i care more about the black cauldron than Ooh. cinderella i ain't watched that shit Oof. care more about aristocats than Ooh. cinderella getting a roast session here 
Never remember. I'm exceptional, Zeb. Could the aliens in this have stopped the terrorists on 9 11? Yeah, I would say they're probably the most uh, powerful. I think if they can recognize what it would be, they probably oh, first yeah, have to they be wouldn't like, have any emotion. They'd what like, is terrorism? Uh, what is, yeah, yeah. What is, is that's a good point. jihad? <laughs> <laughs> Who is Hamas? Well, I mean, you didn't need to bring it too, too real world. Too topical. Uh, probably, I, I, yeah, I'm going to self-censor myself here to not say anything more about that. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I think the aliens, I think they're good. I think we should accept the aliens. Yeah. I like the blue hair. Take me to your leader. Take me to Osama Bin Laden. Osama. Osama. <laughs> All right. Well, you can write us at uh, wholenewpod at gmail.com. Let us know what zombies movie was your favorite. If you even bothered to watch them. You, you uh, should watch this one. I would recommend it. I think they're all worth watching. Mostly just this is the first one's ridiculous. You can't really watch the well, you probably could actually. I was gonna watch. say the like the, the kind of the recap at the beginning, you know. You can watch the third one without watching the second one. Second one is the shortest of them all, though. Third one is second shortest. Maybe that's what makes it better than the first movie. Better than the second movie. It's shorter than the first movie. That means it's the best zombies movie. Fact. Again, that email address is a whole new pod at gmail.com, which brings us to the greatly anticipated by Jacob. Yes. Whole new pop segment where we I'm, have I'm ready, I'm ready. this year's edition of Mountain Dew Voodoo, the mystery flavor soda. I think there's some mascot on it that has like a name, but no, I don't think it says who it is. Shoot. It's me. I'm on the bottle. It's me. There was another one I was trying to find. There's some kind of Fanta that it's called like WTF, like what the Fanta. Oh. That is black and a mystery flavor and apparently turns your tongue as well as some other stuff maybe black or different colors. Could not find that one. I don't think uh, it's got the same distribution as Mountain Dew where there's always dumb Mountain Dew flavors. Fanta is a little more uh, unique. So hopefully this will be better than Coca-Cola Y3000 or whatever. I won't say what I normally say this looks like. I'll just say it looks like Fresca. What do you normally say? I'm not going to say. Oh. I'm not going to. Oh, man. I'm kind of tight. He's kind of tight. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, I love that pour. Sounds like you're pissing. And I'll, 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 we'll take a sip and then I'll Google it to see what it, what, what it really is. Jacob will do the, the oh, scary so. walk over the cable. And just to let you know, listener, I gave him quite the side eye for what he just said. Ooh, that kind of smells good. Hmm. What does that smell like to you? Mountain Dew. <laughs> no, it's different. <laughs> it is different, isn't well, it? Well. I'll give it a it drink. Smells orange. Feeling like is it orange slices? No, no. I feel like it's one. Didn't we have something else mystery? This feels like it tastes kind of like bomb pop popsicles. The red, white, and blue popsicles. Oh, you think so? I think that's got to be some kind of candy. Well, I mean, popsicles are kind of candy. Uh... Like, you know, like, Skit- wasn't it Skittles one time? I mean, I could see it being Skittles again. <laughs> They're just like, oh, fuck, we did it again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Now we got to do the zero sugar voodoo. Oh, I meant to say when we drank it, I, we should have said, who do you voodoo, bitch? But you fuck. Voodoo, bitch? Yeah, maybe Magic of Podcasting, I'll bring that in. Oh, you get a dirty glass? Yeah. Sorry. I got a dirty glass. Not intentionally. I just drank uh, mold. No, it's just silty soap scum mm-hmm. at the bottom of it. It's fine. Uh, maybe that's why you're getting some orange slice. <laughs> <laughs> Let so me, I, you, you do your wrap up and I'll figure I'll say, out yeah, Ignore the dirty glass. You you tell us what. I guess we should have saved a little to. We still got some. Well, still got that's for me. I get okay. the rest. Fair enough. Fair enough. So that was a whole new pop. Find us where you've maybe already found us, where you can get your podcasts, hopefully wherever. That's where we be. All up in that bitch. <laughs> Including oh Apple God. Podcasts. Uh, Jacob Stealing Pop. Uh, wait, you don't know how to spell voodoo? 
So Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, YouTube.com slash a whole new pod where you can like, comment, and subscribe there. Comment on those videos. Uh, unless I signed the comment as Jacob, which I've never done. But if I did do that, you think it maybe was Jacob, but it wouldn't be Jacob. <laughs> but that's where you can maybe communicate with us there, as well as at Twitter, AWN pod run by Dustin. Thank you, Dustin. He had some very exciting news recently. Yes. That uh, he's very excited for the new Mario game. Oh, so. Dustin. <laughs> Checking in. All right, what is what is the flavor supposed to be? The Mountain Dew Voodoo Mystery Flavor has been revealed as Airheads Cherry. Fuck off. I mean, I can taste it, yeah, but it's like Airheads feels like a candy that like nobody eats. I love Airheads. Well, but I but yes, you're right. You really get them. You don't really ever get them. Well, yeah. I mean, in college there was some kind of like Airhead like sour strips that had like. They're kind of like rainbow colored and had lots of sugar on them. Ooh. So not really like airheads at all. But I ate a lot of those in college and I didn't go to the dentist for at least three years. And I had a lot of caffeine. Oh. So I started going to the dentist again. Because I ate a lot of candy and drank eh, a decent amount of soda. Drank yeah. some of the that you remember Sobe. I got some Sobe like strawberry. Sobe life water. Strawberry daiquiri. Uh, nothing life or water about this. This was oh. <laughs> just sugary drink and it was really good all right so we've wrapped up the podcast we've wrapped up zombies we moved into 2022 uh we've wrapped up who do you voodoo Air, uh, cherry airheads and with that uh i think we're starting to wind down only a few more decoms left Lucas, I'm seeing right here that it looks like there's one coming out in another month. What the fuck? <laughs> I can smell God. werewolves. What, what, we were just about to walk past a werewolf, so some shit might go down. Look out, guys. Don't catch fleas. What's that, mate? Fika. Sorry, what? Keep going. Keep walking. What? Keep we walking. heard that, mate. We've got sensitive hearing. Have you? Yeah. What are you filming? It's a music video, leave. is it? We don't want any trouble. Well, I why do. Did you, why did you start it? Have I got your heckles up? Huh? Why hey. don't you go smell your own crotches, huh? Oh, come on, what are you talking about? It. We don't smell our own crotches. We smell each other's crotches, and it's a form of greeting. You're on camera, yeah. mate. Don't, don't do what? it. What? It's okay, because I know this guy. It's Count Fagula. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Don't no, no, no. swear. Sorry. They, they yeah. We're very, werewolves. Not swear. What are we? We're werewolves, not, not swearwolves. Faggot, oh, it's no, it's, it's listen a very to offensive Anton. word it's to call people. Word. Well, unless you're talking about a bundle of sticks. Chase, this bundle of sticks. Werewolves? No, Don't no, no, get no, it. No, it's not real. It's Nathan, just... it's not real. Oh, He's just going to take off his gloves. All right. Oh, oh, oh shit, oh. man. the fuck you do that for? Hey! That was... Don't swear. We're going to lose it. We're going to lose it. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, calm down. Calm down. Oh, shit, I've got my glasses. Hey, 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 hey. Do the breathing. Do the breathing. Do the breathing. Count to ten, mate. Come on. Human again. Hold it. Count to ten. Human again. It's all right. It's not full moon. Thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy Jeez, your night. You shame yeah. yourselves, man. Great. We didn't want this to happen. Come on, guys. Hey, say it. Don't spray it, bitch. Clifton, why are you swearing all the time? Well, he rivaled me.